how did you come across this story? Like, where did this idea, how does a Long Islander get into this, <laughs> this weird, crazy world? Uh, well, believe it or not, I was, I was living in West Virginia at the time. I was living in uh, the Monongahela Forest in, uh, uh, you know, deep in the wilderness, uh, like a hermit, <laughs> quite frankly, studying birds, songbirds, and uh, uh, of the few people out there, a, a logger, you know, it's all timber, timber country, timber roads, and uh, a logger had told me that there was a, a church in the distance that uh, handles these deadly rattlesnakes and copperheads in their surfaces, and, you know, like a like some specter in the night it just seized me these dreams of serpents and uh i i quit my job immediately and i i headed down there to mcdowell county west virginia uh i found this this church this preacher who uh who put me in touch with uh randy wolford actually <clears throat> And uh, the first, <clears throat> the first service, uh, the, the first service I came upon was was his his last one. You're kidding! Wow, really? So let's put that into context. So that's May 27th, like in the film. May 27th, um, 2012. Yep. That's the first time you, that you'd seen it yourself. The the first service I had been to. First serpent handling service, and uh, I, I went in there totally blind, yeah, not not knowing uh, anything about them really. I'm kind of ashamed to ad admit because I'm so fascinated by these groups of people and their religious traditions, customs, tr all just you know everyone, uh, all of them. And uh, yeah, I think I had heard about people handling snakes in the mountains but you know I, I didn't think much of it and until I this really seized me and it was oh incredible wow how how did you get to be I mean you're right there in it with the whole family and um, I was yeah. amazed at how much they allowed I mean you were right there in the midst of it um, when you first met them what was that what connected you to them how did they let you into the service to film it. I mean, you were right uh, there. I, uh, I, 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 they, I had spoken to him the day before, and uh, he invited me graciously. Well, he told me uh, a little bit about himself, how his father had been bitten by a rattlesnake in front of him and died when he was uh, a young boy. Uh, he had a real presence about him, and, uh, they, you know, graciously welcomed me to film their their service, and I uh, and I thanked them for it. And uh, it just tragically was his last. Were they able to see what footage you have, or have they seen it? Uh, I have not been able to show them yet, but hopefully in the near future. Wow, so amazing! Um, I was blown away when his mother um, starts speaking and. I didn't realize her whole family's been affected by this. Um, while you were filming it, what was going through your mind? How were you, because it must have been quite emotional. I mean, there was so much going on, like when they pick him up and take him out into the woods. Um, yeah. What was going through your mind while shooting this? Uh, you know, when I look, look back upon that day and uh, that afternoon and specifically holding the camera uh filming this i i almost didn't know it was kind of like an out of body experience i almost didn't really know what i was looking at or it, i i couldn't really comprehend it but i i there were moments where i felt uh you know, there was something mystical about it. There was something uh, ancient about it, if you will. Uh, just my own 
primal reaction to it, and I, I knew I had to capture everything, everything about it, just uh, almost like a cap, uh, like I was, I could feel that this was some, uh, almost like a, an, an opera, or that's not maybe the right word, but uh, uh, some ancient play or mystery play, some you know. There's something interesting about Appalachia. I think we don't... I mean, really the connections for people outside of it may be like Winter's Bone, I think, was a movie that really showcased one side of that world. But yeah. um, being able to show such an intimate side of it, um, does that make you want to go back there at all to look at the area, to see what more is kind of stuck in that world? Because I think if you look at the country as a whole, that is one area that is unlike anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, completely. I mean, I, I absolutely love Appalachia and West Virginia. It's the landscape that really draws me to it. The, the landscape, the natural history. Uh, I've been a bird watcher my whole life. And the, the nature, the birds, the flowers, the trees, the mountains. It's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite places and Appalachia has also been from in my opinion not not uh, well documented or, or not uh, not adequately celebrated or documented on film something that I definitely hope to do in the future more I hope this film does uh, at least adds something to it you know. What was it like when you heard um, that you were going to be here at Oxford? Did you get it through email or phone call from Melanie? How did you first know that you were going to be a part of the festival? Uh, I, I believe I got an email uh, from Melanie. And, uh, yeah, it, what a great honor. You know, uh, the reason why I, I submitted here is, uh, you know, I, I just hearing Oxford, Mississippi, just hearing that, uh, I... I can't help but think of William Faulkner obviously he's <laughs> one of my he personal heroes and one of the great visionaries and uh, the poetic voice of this region I, I, I would I would have loved to show the film to, to him I mean I could just imagine what he would say my god but uh, yeah that's <laughs> I, I guess you could I, yeah <laughs>